Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. This is uh, where Ralph dresses up as a man from space. I want to emphasize that I fucking love Kamara Gachard and this episode too, even with some of its issues. I enjoyed this episode mainly because Spanner's quote-unquote turn didn't end up as shallow as a lot of people thought it would be. It's not Spanner is trying to be the bad guy to create a united front which is dumb and if you think about that and you say that that's the reason why he turned it's fucking dumb and you shouldn't be fucking talking about the show at the same time i love that the show pretty much regurgitated the same thing that i said in last week's review with spanner saying that now the public information about the chemis being out humanity wouldn't change and humanity would just seek power so his want to eradicate all the chemis still makes sense for him which works like beautifully against Hotoro's because here's the thing Hotoro being I don't know the 17 year old kid is more rational than the full-grown adult but tell you the truth the amount of lies that the academy and the association fed to him does make him slightly less rational and it's so interesting that like Spanner doesn't see like humanity changing being a fin while like Hotoro genuinely believe that chemis and humans can live together and this small little moment is just a speed bump because humanity can change like both of them want a future where everybody is happy but the thing is Spanner sees the worst in humanity because here's the thing how many times Hotoro got really betrayed just saying and also like I loved that Spanner kind of just got the black flame powers because like he saw like Gigas pretty much transmutate a bunch of chemis so it's like oh I can do that too so his plan is pretty much to take all of the chemis and transmutate them to himself and then killing all three kings but with that he does put an expiration date on himself because hey that amount of power cannot be handled by a human which is great once more i'm going to say this this is the most spanner plan that there's going to ever exist spanner is not a rational human being spanner understand that yeah like, this is the right way, it's eradicating both the evil of the three kings that want to destroy or control humanity, while, like, eradicating pretty much the thing that can cause the most misery to humanity. Which is, like, amazing, because here's the thing, like, he's very much the same person, he's still the same kid that watched his parents die in front of him. Like, that is still a thing that is lingering in his head his parents sacrifice didn't matter but his will which is fucking great like i love that his thought is to sacrifice himself because he believes that in the end his parents didn't their sacrifice didn't amount to anything it's just amazing why like at the same time watching hotoro being so conflicted about Spanner's want was genuinely amazing because again it still handles Hotoro's pretty much being the main theme of the show being empathy like even after the restaurant pretty much got ran through by a bunch of fucking people that wanted the chemis he's still like oh my god like what the fuck am I going to do with Spanner and at the same time kind of like trying to check if his mother is okay and like, people are like, oh, being so, like, upset that, oh my god, like, the mother isn't, like, totally upset that Hotoro is a fucking common Rider. Like, come the fuck on, she totally knew that. Like, if you thought she wouldn't knew that, oh, she fucking knows. I'm sorry, I don't believe that Hopper 1, as a Kemi, wouldn't just be jumping around that night to wake her up. Just saying and bringing back 
Mr. Asashi to talk to Hotoro was great because it really feels like the show is trying to just straight up like straight up trying to talk to me only because as a person that really loved the Wrestler G like episode bringing back all of the characters from the Wrestler G episode is just so nice and having him pretty much talk to Hotoro and kind of explain to him that yeah sometime when a man is like genuinely that desperate and that pretty much tunnel vision on something talking to him isn't the right thing which yeah makes sense here's the thing like this situation like the talking through your fists thing shouldn't be a thing that needs to be introduced in the first half of the show it can be a situational thing like why people are complaining about this like genuinely but like it makes sense like Hotoro is not the type of person that will throw in the first punch okay he, but if he needs to he would but i still love that like, Hotoro still at first after he threw the sucker punch he still tried to talk to him he's still trying to pretty much say hey come on like you understand it's kind of a dumb idea and spanner pretty much saying dude you don't get this we are on two completely different roads just just stop like and having that fight oh, it was amazing and it's kind of funny that the show kind of needed an excuse to pretty much say to us and show us how spanner can be on the same level as hotel going pretty much toe to toe with him and it's it's kind of funny but the, the entire fight itself the way it was shot like the fight itself the story that that the fight told the dialogue between the two in the fight was amazing with, from spanner telling hotoro is a child and pretty much he hates himself or at least his younger self because here's the thing because he had the same views as hotoro he literally calls him a child because this is one he thought about protecting humans and making everybody happy means they literally have the same fucking viewpoints the difference is like one suffered a great tragedy when he was young while the other just didn't have a father which could be just a normal ass human or it could genuinely be like fuga and like rene is his sister but a terror the truth it doesn't really make a lot of sense but hey i don't fucking know even like admitting like spanner straight up admits hotoro you're stronger i hate you for that but i hate the way you the way you view what the future can be more like this is so fucking good this is spanner literally just trauma dumping on Hotoro while Hotoro is fucking listening and trauma dump himself literally calling himself selfish he literally calls himself selfish of wanting the best things for the people that he very much wants to protect and it's so fucking good and like the idea that in the end the thing that pretty much defeated fucking Spanner is pretty much himself because yeah you can say Hotoro was stronger but for fuck's sake those black flame powers aren't fucking stable enough because how much he got them he didn't stabilize them so pretty much the Valvara driver gets destroyed but also nice broken helmet shot that was cool and like in the end the conflict doesn't really resolve itself the conflict just kind of end on spanner's ways it's like you know what we are pretty much driving to the same path but on different roads we would never see eye to eye like that's fucking great like there is consequences to that fight like first of all the association has now less chemis because literally spanner still holds them but also, Spanner is now alone. Straight up. He got punched fucking Lachesis. He left Kyoka. 
Like, he's basically alone, which could lead to two different things, or teaming up with Gigas, or becoming a fucking, like, semi of an anti-hero, which could be really cool. Again, like, fuck, this episode was so good and it genuinely touched on so many things that the show already touched on. And if you say that, oh, it's, it doesn't matter, like, it's inconsistent, Bruh, it's like, you haven't been paying attention from the get-go. Just don't fucking talk about it. While we got the big lead-up to next week's episode with Galaja kidnapping Atropis and putting on the same spell that she put on Rene. Well, it's not the same spell, it's... Okay, it's literally the same spell. It's kind of like a two-piece of a spell. It's pretty much Garaja wanting to use Atropis and her pretty much doll-like being, but the problem is she's not strong enough. So, the first half of the spell would just drain all of Rene's life energy and give it to Atropis. Because Atropis, as last week's episode told us, and now, straight up, this episode told us, Rene is the fiend that Garyon modeled to create a Tropis. Like, this episode was amazing. Like, my main issue with it, it just feels like it's too goddamn late to do it. Everything about this is way too late. I feel like we had like four to five episodes that we could have maybe pushed away from the show, aka the legend arc. This could have been like an amazing point in the show, kind of closer to the end, but not as close to pretty much we are pretty much a couple of weeks away from the show ending. This could have genuinely been S+, plus if it would have been any earlier than episode 47 out of 50. Just saying, just saying. But still, this was a terrific character deconstruction for both Spanner and Hotoro. Two characters that represent two completely different ideologies, which works with Hotoro being the prism of the show. Yeah, like, this episode gets an A+, I don't give a shit. If you genuinely have a contrasting opinion than mine, I would love to hear it. If you like the video, please, Press that like button, and if you still haven't, help my subscribe button, at least on your end, to become a subscribed button, please do. Also, don't forget, you're the only one that can prevent forest fires. Thank you very much, and have a great rest of your day. Bye bye!